now that the gut microbiota um, is crucial for human health and diseases. There is a bidirectional communication between this, uh, the gut microbiota and the human body. We know that uh, the gut microbiota can modulate metabolism, inflammation, the activity of the immune system in general, neurotransmission. And uh, we know that um, there are some alterations, pro-inflammatory alterations in people with Parkinson's disease at the level of the gut microbiota. So this uh, essentially has um, um, represented the rational for uh, several studies which have investigated the use of uh, gut microbiota motulating interventions for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Uh, specifically in uh, our randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial, um, we have investigated the effect of a specific probiotic, uh, which is a combination of of, um, bac bacteria which are known to have a beneficial effect on human health in people with Parkinson and gastrointestinal syndromes such as constipation. So we know that uh, th this population of patients um, um, is likely to have an involvement of the gastrointestinal tract. And uh, um, we looked at different outcome measures. So we looked at uh, how this intervention compared to the uh, placebo uh, could change the gut microbiota. We know that in people with Parkinson's, uh, there is a reduced abundance of uh, short-chain fatty acid uh, producer bacteria. So uh, we looked at the amount of, uh, at the differences in abundance of uh, bacteria at the level of the uh, gut microbiota. We looked at inflammatory markers uh, uh, in the blood of the patients recruited, and we also looked at motor and non-motor symptoms. And uh, uh, essentially what we have seen is that the probiotic compared to the uh, placebo was able to modulate the uh, gut microbiota of the participants in an anti-inflammatory uh, way. For instance, we have seen uh, um, an increased abundance of Blautia vesicola, which is known to be reduced in people with Parkinson's disease and is known to produce short-chain fatty acids, which are um, which have a, a, an anti-inflammatory uh, effects and uh, um, but also we have seen in parallel uh, a reduction of um, uh, TNF alpha which is known to have uh, um, pro-inflammatory activity so we have seen a statistically significant reduction in this um, uh, inflammatory market at the level of the blood uh, samples of the participants and also we have seen some positive changes uh, in uh, motor and motor symptoms. So for instance, we have observed a statistically, statistically significant reduction of the time to on, which is the time for the patients um, to experience uh, a benefit after the medication intake. Uh, we have also seen a statistically significant reduction in the non-motor symptoms burden as measured by uh, the non-motor symptom scale. And this statistically significant reduction was driven by improvement in the gastrointestinal domain, constipation specifically, which is not a surprise. We know from other studies that probiotics can be beneficial uh, in treating constipation in people with Parkinson's uh, disease, but also um, uh, in the sleep and fatigue domain, which is quite an interesting finding. And now the next step would be to do further studies, further research to try to understand what are the mechanisms behind these um, positive results that we have observed. One of the possible rationale behind um, the improvement of motor symptoms that we have seen uh, in this uh, trial uh, could be that we have an improvement of constipation. <coughs> And uh, as we know, the uh, constipation per se or, or other gastrointestinal disturbances might represent an obstacle to the transport and the absorption of uh, levodopa, which is the gold standard treatment for Parkinson's disease. So uh, one possible explanation is that if by taking this probiotic I can improve the transit at the level of the gastrointestinal tract, then I can better absorb my medication, levodopa for instance, and this can lead to a, a reduction 
one of the time to on which we have seen. Uh, similarly, uh, we can observe for the same explanation improvement of the non-motor symptoms which uh, are responsive to levodopa. Some of the non-motor symptoms are levodopa responsive. Or another more speculative explanation could be that, for instance, the, uh, an improvement in fatigue could be, as, um, could be due to a reduction of the uh, systemic inflammatory situation because we know that fatigue in Parkinson's and also in other diseases is usually associated with higher levels of inflammation. This specific uh, randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial, uh, which we have run at King's College London, uh, at the Parkinson's Foundation Center of Excellence, led by Professor Chaudhuri, who uh, is the PI of this study, in collaboration with the uh, Lund Center in uh, Sweden with Professor Perodin has essentially shed uh, a light on a possible future uh, ventures in the field of uh, the gut uh, brain axis in Parkinson's disease. So, uh, for instance, uh, we know now that. Um, uh, changes in the gut microbiota could be associated to specific motor and non-motor symptoms. So uh, we, uh, future research should try to better investigate these associations and uh, we are going forward the concept of personalized medicine. So uh, I um, imagine that, I think that in the next future uh, what could happen is that on the basis of the specific gut microbiota composition of a person, we uh, could then offer a specific gut microbiota modulating intervention to target that specific uh, alterations. But it's still early days because we know there are these changes, but we don't really know what are the meanings of the cha these changes. And another important thing is that we are only looking at bacteria, but we know that the gut microbiota is characterized by uh, uh, viruses, protozoa, other microorganisms, and they communicate uh, constantly and continuously with our body. So there is still a lot of research that needs to be done to better understand what is the uh, uh, meaning of this gut microbiota alteration in Parkinson's disease and in other diseases in general. I take this opportunity to uh, say uh, thank you to all the participants which have uh, participated to this uh, trial. Without them, we couldn't do uh, and we couldn't see any of these uh, uh, results. And this is something that is crucially important for research. And so thank you to all the person with, to all the people with Parkinson's that have been, uh, uh, have participated in the study. Uh, I would like to thank also Professor Chaudhuri, who is the PI of the study and my PhD mentor. This is part of my PhD project. So uh, I would like to thank my mentor and all the uh, research team uh, from King's College Hospital and from the Lund Center, uh, which have supported uh, the study.